Hello, my name is Elizabeth Conlin. I live in San Jose, California. I'm a volunteer lead with South Bay Yimby. And today I'll be talking with Jeremy Bobasi, a player with the San Jose Earthquakes and a housing advocate. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you doing? Good, so how did you become interested in housing advocacy? Yeah, it's been a long journey, kind of dating back to high school, college, but really through literature um, and wanting to understand how our, educa our education system works the way it does and why it's so difficult to have, you know, at times integrated schools, but also schools that are properly funded, um, which brought me back to housing policies because a lot of our public schools were going through property taxes. And so once I saw the intersection of those various sectors and whatnot, I was like, okay, well, let me understand a little bit more about housing, which brought me to The Color of Law, uh, a book that many housing advocates have been radicalized by, yep. um, as well as Race for Profit by Kianga Yamada Taylor and how the country, both public and private industries have made it explicitly difficult for black families to build wealth through housing, whereas mm. it has subsidized the opportunity for, for other families. So between that, living in Portland, which I felt was a nice, dense neighborhood where I could enjoy myself, walk around, uh, but also moving into the Bay, understanding the unaffordability around us, the unhoused issues that we have here and mm -hmm. just the shortage of housing, frankly, that's only getting worse every time that we have transplants coming in and, you know, community members who have been here for so long struggling to hold on to their homes. Yeah. So how about you? How did you get into the housing scene and specifically like what brought you to Yimby? Yeah, I think that mix of the personal experience and then tying it into bigger causes that that I care about was something that really made housing advocacy an enduring, you know, an enduring area of of effort and engagement for me. So I had lived in several other states in the U.S. before moving to California for a job. And I spent the first couple of years here just kind of complaining to my friends about the cost of housing right. and, you know, living with roommates, having to move out once, you know, your roommate goes somewhere mm -hmm. else, you got to find a new situation. And it got to a point where I felt that, you know, this is my home. I want to invest in my community. I want to figure out why is housing here so difficult? And I was living in the Santa Cruz area at the time, and I just posted on the local subreddit. I was like, hey, are there any groups for renters around here? <laughs> and a couple of people chimed in, and they told me about Santa Cruz EMB. And I found a really great group of advocates, some people who worked in affordable housing, some people like me who were just renters struggling, mm. people who had, you know, had like an eviction and felt insecurity, people who were frustrated they'd never be homeowners, some people who were frustrated that their kids just wouldn't have the same opportunities in California that they had had. And so that really, that personal connection brought me in and then seeing how it linked to these other issues mm -hmm. I care about, like, you know, racial justice and climate change. I think that's really made me feel like housing is the right area to focus on. Yeah, no, you touched on it a little bit, but it just touches so many different sectors, whether you're talking about climate change and how the urban sprawl is contributing to the amount of cars on the road and uh, the inaccessibility of transit centers based on just proximity. Um, so it's, it's truly difficult. But something that I also want to touch on is really how organic the Yimby community is. I mean, I was acquainted to the community via a player, um, actually even a college friend who started throwing around the word NIMBY. And I was like, what's a NIMBY? Um, and lo and behold, I discovered YIMBY and started to discover their various chapters nationwide and understanding that there are people that are in the fight that are trying to do this the right way. I mean, I'm fortunate with my platform as a professional soccer player where I'm not going to go through a lot of the difficulties that others might when they're trying to rent, when they're trying to buy homes. Uh, but that doesn't remove me from the situation just because A, my family and friends uh, are still people that are not afforded this platform that I have and I don't want them to go through struggles, but also uh, I've always seen my career as an opportunity to build community with people that maybe I don't have a personal relationship with, but that I wanna understand their story and I wanna be a, a microphone for that. So uh, 
the EMB project is just so organic and it's growing one by one by one, but it's, it's, it's really cool how you were able to find community in Santa Cruz mm -hmm. um, and how that's led you kind of down your journey running for city council, I believe it was, and kind of going up with those forces. Yeah, it's definitely been great to get involved. There's, you know, a really passionate community of people who have done a lot of the same reading that you have, have, you know, various life experiences. Uh, you know, again, maybe their, their job touches on housing. I have no background in housing policy or housing construction. I'm a scientist. And so this is sort of what I do in my free time. And to me, it's okay that I don't understand all the nuances of housing policy. Uh, I can rely on this great community of other people who have that expertise. I know that if I show up to a meeting for a permanent supportive housing project, that my voice is my contribution to the housing movement. And that's important. Yeah, the, the people opposing more housing and just housing opportunities in general uh, are relying on people being discouraged by not having the expertise in the industry. It's, it's advocates like you, like me, that are constantly trying to learn what's going on in our local communities that make it difficult for kind of the bigger interests to really uh, have their way without working for it. So uh, super important and, and all politics and activism is local, um, which kind of brings me to San Jose um, how long have you been in San Jose? I know that you grew up in DC metro area, but what has been your experience finding housing, finding a community that feels like home, uh, both in the actual place that you live, but uh, in the surrounding community as well? How's that been? Yeah, so I've lived in San Jose for just a little over a year. It's interesting how different times in my life, different times where I've had to look for new housing have kind of brought new challenges and made me consider the role of housing policy, the role of advocacy different. So in San Jose, I live with my partner and his mother and we care for his mother. She is elderly and disabled. And so the challenge that I most recently had in, in my own housing story is trying to find a place that was accessible mm -hmm. for someone with mobility issues. Right. And it's amazing how blind I was to it until it was my reality. So the steps up to this house, I would have never seen that as an obstacle. Uh, a bathtub instead of a shower, I would have never seen that as a reason to reject a place to live. Um, places like townhomes are, are no longer options for, for, for me and my household to live. So that's been a really interesting experience for me in San Jose and even apartment buildings. You know, I wanted something that was more transit oriented in closer proximity to uh, things that I could go out and do to walk to. A lot of that didn't exist that was accessible and affordable for my household. Right. No, I mean, that, that seems like a recurring theme across San Jose. I mean, I was in Portland at first, um, where at the time at least, it was maybe half of the rental price, uh, median prices. But then I got to San Jose and again, I was like, I was used to being in an urban downtown center, bustling, able to walk to coffee shops, walk to community gathering spaces, meet people organically there. So I was like, where in San Jose am I gonna find that? Uh, granted, my career put me in a position where I had to move almost on a day's notice uh, so, and I think it settled pretty quickly after that. So uh, it was a difficult process to actually find the right home. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I did find was it's a very nice community in San Jose, very family oriented, uh, but we're so separated. Mm -hmm. Like we all live in our single family zoned homes or we do live in apartment complexes, but we're not super close and, and super connected to, to each other because of kind of some of the sprawl that we see in San Jose. So I think that the climate and the beauty of San Jose um, from that standpoint could really be magnified if I had felt and so many others feel that sense of community. Uh, but it's been a great city. I've been exploring the Bay, I've been up and down the East Bay and now have gone up to San Francisco as well. So Yeah, absolutely. I think it's interesting that San Jose is one of the biggest cities in the U.S. 
and it sort of still has a suburban feel. Mm -hmm. And I know that drew a lot of people to San Jose, but I also know that that's not for everyone. It sounds like that's not for you and it doesn't sound like that really fits for me. So I think having more housing options, which is something we talk a lot about in the housing movement is important. And San Jose has public transit and I think they have a huge opportunity to build up more around their light rail stations and other, other transit to really further transit oriented development and solve some of the issues of traffic and also of vehicle emissions that that are a big issue that the city wants to tackle yeah that's just kind of providing that array uh, of options that i think we're all kind of looking for and yeah. uh, building up kind of the downtown in san jose as well and the neighboring communities would be an awesome opportunity to kind of just keep foot traffic alive and mm -hmm. bring commercial um, business opportunities and just give it even more of a city feel because San Jose already has some of that and I just like I would want to amplify that like this is such a beautiful community that mm -hmm. I get to see on game day you know 15 to 18,000 strong supporting the soccer team uh, seeing the food trucks and seeing the musicians that come by and the local businesses I mean I see the vibrant community that is San Jose mm -hmm. uh, I just I would love to continue to build that up uh, in you know the city and I see housing as, a, as an opportunity to do that. One of the things that I thought was interesting when we were talking about the neighborhood where we are now is that this neighborhood is high density. Mm. There are multiple families living together but in a single family house mm. and so creating more options for people doesn't necessarily mean changing the character of the neighborhood it maybe just means changing the built environment of the neighborhood, but it could allow families like the ones in this neighborhood in San Jose to have a little bit more space, have a little bit more autonomy, a little bit more separation maybe from yeah. their neighbors. Yeah, I know that. I mean, that's a good segue to kind of us touring the property a little bit and seeing just how uh, we could through different Senate measures and SB4 in particular that we're going to be discussing today, how it's going to impact this particular property uh, and provide different spaces for, uh, in this case, the church to, to use as it sees fit with the affordable housing, um, but in other cases as well, allow these multiple families in single family homes to spread out a little bit uh, on an affordable uh, scale. So let's yeah. get to that. Let's go take a look. Let's do it. So the reason why we decided to film at a church today is because in California, there's a state bill, Senate Bill 4, that's been introduced by Scott Weiner with YIMBY support that will allow religious organizations like the River Church community and nonprofit colleges to be able to build affordable housing on their land. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, we really want to support this bill because it's streamlining the process so that they're not going through additional red tape that's going to make it difficult for nonprofit colleges as well as religious institutions and faith-based groups uh, to build on the excess land that they have. And something that's really important to know as well is that these groups are centers of the community. Mm -hmm. Like whether you're talking about a college, a faith-based institution, like they have the community who's really going to be able to benefit from the additional homes. Uh, so it's just super important that we're making it as easy as possible for them to build these affordable homes that are going to have such an impact on, on different lives and you know we'll be part of the community uh, and also close to transit hubs in certain cases mm -hmm. close to places that people are used to frequenting so talk to me a little bit about the process of lobbying for a bill like SB4 like we know the impact but what mm -hmm. goes into it I know there's a lot of interest uh, but I personally haven't been to you know uh, a session and given mm -hmm. testimony in person. So what's that like? So the first thing that really goes into a bill is having a need identified. Mm -hmm. And in my experience with housing advocacy and advocating for YIMBY is we've had many religious institutions, churches, temples, come to our chapters and ask us to advocate for a project they wanna build, whether it's housing for seniors, homeless housing, housing for you know, parishioners, 
Um, and, you know, a lot of them feel it's part of their mission to, to provide housing in the community. And so instead of one project approved at a time, we came together and said we need statewide reform in order to make it easier for all religious institutions in California to build affordable housing. So that's, that's the impetus behind SB4. Now, with, with lobbying, we, uh, you know, chapters sign on to support. We meet with our senators. We meet with our assembly people. We tell them we support the bill. And this is happening uh, with, with all the supporters. So those religious institutions, representatives from the Carpenters Union and other a uh, lot of other organizations throughout California who really support the goals behind this bill. Mm. So when Yimbies decide to support a bill, we you know, really organize behind it, whether it's drafting letters, making phone calls. Earlier this year, we had in-person visits mm. to legislators, to our assembly people and senators, and let them know all the reasons why this bill is good for housing and local communities. Now, I think I want to touch like on a another point that you mentioned that a you're bringing together all these groups like the carpenters unions the faith-based institutions mm -hmm. the wide array of people that are involved in putting together a project that's going to impact so many different homes uh, and building that relationship between the various uh, inputs going into the project i think creates an opportunity for them to build a project the right way and to garner support so that it gets through uh, the actual legislative process. Uh, and the other part is, you talked about, in this case, faith-based institutions coming to YIMBY. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to note that this isn't something that is being pushed on anyone. This is something that the community is asking for. And the job of our elected representatives is to listen to the community. So I really look forward to everything that both YIMBY and our partners on the ground are doing in order to continue to garner support, educate the community, and ultimately have an impact, because that's what we want to do. We don't want to do this just to say that we did it. Mm -hmm. We want to do this because we know that it's going to help so many different lives. Yeah, and it sounds so simple, right? Like, why can't a church build a 30-unit apartment building for aging seniors in the community? But they, all, they often face a lot of opposition uh, you know, people fear some neighborhood change or the noise of construction, but ultimately what's going to make that community stronger is making sure, you know, seniors have housing, the church gets to fulfill that mission. And so having this broader reform on something that I don't think should be controversial is just really important in California to serve some really vulnerable populations. Yeah, and it's the, the church in this moment, but other moments it's gonna be nonprofit colleges mm -hmm. who have this vast land that's being used in so many different ways, but is near a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a huge opportunity to develop this land, make it affordable for the community, and then continue to enlarge enlarging the community as well so and now we get to talk to ihoma from the river church community to talk a little bit more about this land and the opportunity that we have through us before so hi ihoma how are you hi. doing good hey welcome i'm glad you could come and see the space yeah it's good to be here so can you talk to us a little bit about what sp4 and specifically the opportunity to build more affordable homes would mean to the river church community well, it is a huge thing. So about 23 years ago, in October of 2000, in the dot-com boom, we purchased this land, this home, and the vision was for it to be a blessing to the neighborhood. We wanted it to be a place where some people from the church could live and do ministry, particularly like tutoring at the school that's right across the street. And we were never able to really realize the multiple like homes on this lot. So we will now finally be able to build multiple homes on this space. And SB4 really helps us with that. And how does your church currently uh, provide housing to community members? Yeah, so most people find housing in San Jose. Um, we have been encouraging the creation of affordable housing. So we partner with nonprofits like City Team. We just finished a four, like remodeling four units of affordable housing with them. Um, and in general, we encourage people to do things like create an ADU on an existing property, 
Um, we help connect people and affinity groups to find housing together. But this is our first time that we ourselves are creating it. So it's a big step for us and I think a much needed one. No, it's super exciting. I mean, when you talk about the church, I mean, it's a staple of the community. It's something that everyone trusts. So uh, can you talk to us a little bit about the community aspect of the church, but also this specific lot? Like it's a multi-purpose lot. Uh, you talked to us about it off screen. So yeah, mm -hmm. give us a little bit more insight. Yeah, we're located just a few blocks from downtown. So it's kind of a great area. It has mixed use, a lot of commercial and residential properties. But this neighborhood itself, um, largely Latino, mostly Spanish speaking. And housing is scarce here. If you look at any home around them, you might see one house but there's really six or seven families living inside of it. So a lot of high density, not a lot of space, not a lot of um, accessibility for something like this. Um, we have used it for community garden. You can see some of the plots just here. We've used it to offer tutoring spaces for kids, a place they can run around after school, learn something, STEM, STEAM, be invested in by members of our church and other nonprofits we partner with. And we've also been able to address um, some of the psychological and spiritual needs. So for about 10 years, a pastor and his family were living here in this um, house and they would offer counseling to people in the neighborhood, not just uh, spiritual counseling, but they were trained, he was trained as a psychologist, so actual counseling. So it's a way that the community can gather for all of their needs. I've taught English here for many years to many people in the neighborhood, and it's a way for people to have uh, life advancement, not just for their own families, but to contribute to our community in, in San Jose. Mm. So we have SB4, obviously something that's gonna streamline the process of building affordable homes, something that's vastly important and something that your church and many other faith-based institutions are leaders uh, in and want to be leaders in, but we have to support them from a legislative process. Talk to us a little bit about what this actual lot is gonna look like with the hopeful and eventual passage of SB4. Fingers crossed, SB4 passes, really excited about it. So that house right behind us is sort of the main structure. And our hope is to have a junior ADU, that's a accessory dwelling unit, sometimes called a in-law unit or a granny flat. We'll have a junior ADU on the back of it. And in this wide open space here that's been cleared, we'll have a standalone ADU. So at least two bedrooms, so another family can live here in their home on this space. And we hope to preserve our community garden and some of the green spaces around so the community can continue to enjoy and access it. So it's truly a creative solution to kind of excess space, but something that can really only be afforded through kind of the passage of SB4. So really exciting to hear those plans. And yeah, I mean, is there anything else that you want the Yimby community and beyond to know about your church, building affordable housing, uh, the mission of, of what you're doing as well? Well, I, I would say we're incredibly privileged. Over 23 years ago, someone had vision to buy this property. And unless they did that, we would not be able to offer it now. The cost of this really small house is skyrocketed in the last um, 23 years. And our neighbors feel that all over the place. So they cannot get into the housing market. If we had not had this property, we could not get into the housing market. So we're privileged to have this resource, and many churches do. They have a property that they purchased 20 plus years ago. And our hope is that we would add affordable housing stock to the market. So people who live in this community could actually afford to own something in this community, could actually afford to stay here in this community. And we know that otherwise they would not have the opportunity. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah. SB4 is not gonna solve everything, but it's a piece of the machine that's chipping away at uh, creating more abundant, affordable and safe homes for, for all. So thank you for the work that you're doing and we're hopeful that SB4 can, can come through and I wanna see what this looks like in, in however long it takes to, to develop it. So I hope you it. come back. Yeah, thank you for sharing the mission and, and your vision for this property with us. Thank you. So that was great to see the property and the vision that the River Church community has for building more housing on their no, property. It was, it was awesome. I mean, it just reminds me of the importance of the work that, you know, Yimby's doing, so many other nonprofit and activists are doing in order to highlight this issue and, mm -hmm. and bring about more opportunity. Um, but as we spoke off air, like SB4 is not a foregone conclusion. Like it takes showing up on a regular basis. It takes playing your part. Like not everyone is gonna be the state senator 
uh, that is lobbying or introducing the bill, uh, but through taking your own individual steps, you can have an impact talking to your neighbor. So talk to me a little bit about how you show up uh, for a fight like this. Yeah, so it might seem surprising to people who don't know a lot about housing that something that seems as basic as letting a church, a temple, a nonprofit college build affordable housing would be controversial. But we have to push to make it happen. If you have time, make a phone call. If you're afraid of making a phone call to your assembly member, uh, send an email. And it can be really basic. It can be, you know, hey, my name is Jeremy. I care about affordable housing. Please vote yes on SB4. And just that act of taking a minute to voice your support for a bill and let someone, let your, you know, assembly member, let your senator know that you support it is, is really important to getting, to making progress in, in California. And like you said, no one bill solves the housing crisis, but each one contributes something valuable. Yeah, each one equips individuals like you and me and beyond with the tools to play our part in the community. And, and it goes back to how we show up. Like I'm a professional soccer player by day. Like I'm not able or knowledgeable enough to lead certain parts of this fight. But I try to use my platform. I try to show up and build relationships. Uh, like you said, calling, writing letters, uh, just finding community within this. Talking to your friends, yeah. sharing with your network, saying, hey, you know, I know you care about education, mm -hmm. but did you know that housing is essential to accomplishing, mm -hmm. you know, those, that progress you want to see in, in education? Yeah, no, it's a, Everyone has to do their part in a small way. And, you know, I don't even know where my part really lies. I'm learning every day. I'm sure you're learning every day. Yeah. I'm trying to grow. Uh, but ultimately, that's what anyone can do. And if we're all fighting from different angles towards the same goal, then we can start to make incremental change. And ultimately, then that can lead us to the substantive uh, and, and life-changing opportunities that we're looking to, to usher in. Yeah, and one of the great thing of, things about South Bay Yimby is we have a huge you know variety of people throughout the south bay you know some of our our volunteers are still in high school mm. some of them are retired they have different housing stories they have different life stories they have different backgrounds in in housing policy like i said some people know about building housing some people know about housing through their experiences as a renter and regardless of your your background, your expertise, you are qualified to advocate for more housing. Yeah. No, people, people are relying on my ignorance, our collective ignorance to certain process in order to keep things as they are. And, you know, we're not gonna let that stand, so. Yeah, it's so important to show up. Uh, we think about Forest Hill in San Francisco. This was a senior housing uh, development that was proposed several years ago, and it failed. You think, who opposes housing for low-income seniors, but people are uncomfortable with change maybe. And so it takes all of us showing up, saying yes, and again, passing these statewide reforms so that every you know, religious institution that wants to play a role in housing their neighbors can, can do so. And so when we all make phone calls, write letters, tell our friends to do that, tell our families to, to advocate, uh, search out your local YIMBY chapter, get involved in whatever capacity you can. We can we can make real change and create real homes for people. Yeah, no, I'm I'm energized by this conversation. I mean, I'm just thinking about how there's so many opportunities for us to make an impact, and it starts with growing our organic YIMBY community, telling a friend, having conversations about housing, because everyone this affects everyone, whether it's them as individuals, their families, etc. So I'm excited by this, this visit that we've had, the potential for this lot, uh, as well as growing our organic YMB community. So thanks for, thanks for joining me on this path and looking forward to how SB4 comes around. Yeah, it was great getting to know you, hear more about your interest in housing, and I'm excited to advocate for a better future with you.